Welcome to Painting Tutorial for Imperial Guard. Uh, this is the figure I'm going to show you how to paint. It's the uh, urban camouflage scheme that I've used on all of the Imperial Guard. James uses the same colour scheme as well. And uh, it's a very fast but effective technique. So just follow along step by step and uh, you'll be able to achieve the same results uh, fast and effective. Right, so paints you'll need for this project, uh, probably the least amount of paints you'll need for uh, a tutorial that I've shown so far. Uh, so just base colours then, uh, ceramite white, which is the old skull white, and then uh, baton black, which is the old chaos black. Uh, if you've got a, old paints or new paints and you want to look up the which colours which, then just go on Google, type in Sizzle Paints Conversion Chart and uh, that will bring up an image and you'll see on that uh, the old paints and new paints so you know which ones are which and then for flesh here it's the old dwarf flesh that I'm using and then Ushabati bone which is the replacement for bleached bone and then you'll also need uh, Codex Grey as well and then uh, Iron Breaker which is the new colour replacing chain mount and just for washes I'm going to use free washes, Seraphim Sepia, and then Agrax Earthshade, and then finally, Nuln Oil. So, not many paints at all. You're just starting out Imperial Guard uh, in this colour scheme. Uh, it doesn't require many paints at all. So, just on the preparation for this guy, uh, plastic figure has just been cut out and glued to his base and then I've done the basing that's just with PVA glue and then sprinkling on my different stones and sand and then once it's dry uh, I then do use two different sprays and again like my other videos I show the undercoat that you use will save you a lot of time uh, so two greys there so two sprays first spray I use is Montana Gold and it's the stealth colour code is 7070 and that's that dark grey colour that I use on uh, in my other painting schemes. I use that for the base uh, spray all the base and the rim and then once it's dry I cover it up with tissue the base and then spray the rest of the figure in a lighter grey. It's like a medium grey colour and I use Uniform Grey Uniform Grey by Army Painter and that one works fine. So those two colours, and that saves you a lot of work. Um, you're ready to go straight on painting details and washes once those uh, two primer spray sprays are on. Right, so the first step then is we'll get this base done. And two colours, Codex Grey and then the white as well and I'm just using a base coat brush here. it's like an old brush and it's quite a nice size to it and then I'm just scrubbing out some of the paint here it's like a wet dry brush there's enough paint on there uh, but not too much that goes into the gaps and then simply just highlighting that base with the grey It's just going on nicely. Pretty quick tutorial this one. Quick process. You can imagine you could really, I mean with figures that you're painting a lot of, then you could do, and it's a fast technique, then you could easily do 20 at a time perhaps. No problem at all. Taking some of the white now, mixing it slightly with the grey, and then just highlighting the top of the base. It's going on nicely, just there. White's a bit too strong, so I mix it up a little bit. Any mistakes, just rub it off, because that base rim is actually finished, and it's the right colour for you already. There we go. That's the base done, and highlighted, happy with that. Right, so next colour, be a good point at the beginning 
just to fill in the flesh. And for that, you can just use the dwarf flesh. So the face, I'll just fill that in. Not worrying about details, it's just the colour that you want to fill that in with. And then for this figure, there's hands as well. It's being neat, no need to get the paint everywhere and make mistakes. There's one hand, and then there's another one. Just under the thing there. Come round and then just there as well. That's all the flesh on him. Done. Just gonna add a bit more to the face just to strengthen that colour. That's it, looking good. Next colour is the iron breaker. And you're just looking to put your base colour on. There's quite a few metallic parts to this one. You got this crest here on the gun. About half the gun would be the metallic colour. So just working all the all the end of the barrel there, there's a strip of stuff on top. Just there. I mean, I'm using a detail brush here, but you could probably get away with using a bigger size. This uh, bracket here that goes into the arm here, that's that colour as well. Crest on the top of the helmet. The grenades here. I've given him some grenades. So we'll make those metal as well underneath. Coming around here, there's a crest on the water bottle. It's the handle of the dagger. That's it. Looking good. You got this box here at the back. I paint it black. Don't have to. That's the metals done. We knew that Imperial Guard would be a huge force. And I've thought about different colour schemes for a long time. Did like the, the Cadian uh, colour scheme from the Codexes. They were nice uh, colour schemes. It was tempting to go for them. But I tried to develop, this was years ago, I tried to develop uh, a colour scheme that was fast and yet looked pretty good. And we were focusing on sort of city fight, urban terrain. So the grey colour scheme worked out really well. And this colour scheme is uh, nice and fast, which is uh, good for putting together a large force such as Imperial Guard. So then you're just on to the black, and that's the shoulder pads. So nice solid covering for them. Very straightforward this colour scheme. And the helmet, being careful not to go over the crest, just neat. Just along the top there, tucking in. And Just come along the right. Just fill in all the details. That's it. And then the armour. Basically, any armoured part would be black. 
and then later on you get to that nice sort of chipping effect which is very effective because you want the you want people to know that it's it is a metallic armor you know some kind of protection for them so just going in around the front here a little bit fiddly to get in there that's it then up and underneath Just come along the right and then just tuck in the brush in along there. Pretty good. A couple of little bits of the iron breaker. The belt buckle here I'm going to do in that colour. And then also there is a, an eagle crest here just on his chest, just on the arm. I'm going to put those two bits in. That's fine. So back to the black now. And it's the boots and shoes. I'm doing black as well. Just rounds the figure off. Uh, you can leave them grey. It's entirely up to you. You can adapt this however you want. I found that making them black balances them quite nicely. Separates them uh, from the grey cloth. You know, it's not a striking figure on its own, this guardsman. Um, and you know, not like when you're painting Eldar, each one's a can end up being a masterpiece. But I wanted these done in a like a drab and basic colour scheme so that they look good on mass, and it's the overall impression that they create. And you want it, a colour scheme to make give the impression that there are you know there's millions and millions of these guys and they're all the same, which is the impression you get here. Right then, this casing here, similar to a Space Marine bolter, when you give it that black uh, trim. Well, it's for the casing on the gun, same for this guardsman here. Just being quite neat going around uh, where I've gone with the metallic. And just run along here. Just going on well and just tucking in on top. That's good. He looks pretty good just with the base colours before any washes go on. So I'm sure you could change the colours around. Instead of black you could switch it to another colour. But your basic for the guard is an other, a smock colour which is all his overalls and then a, a, some other colour for the armour and for the gun. And uh, you can invent any combination that you want, it doesn't have to be. Uh, black and grey as I'm doing. Depends on where these guardsmen are fighting. Uh, so just the, sh the uh, sort of scabbard here on the bayonet. Coming around. Looking good. And then I'm going to do this box here on the back here. Do that in black. And then the water bottle casing as well. Up there. And then around. And then the belts and buckles. I do in black as well. Now you want to be neat at this stage because you don't want to have to correct any mistakes. So I'll just run along there. Just tuck it in there. A little bit of the chest plate to get there. And a little bit of it strapping just runs under the arm. Flip them over. And that's all covered up. We'll paint this bit here as well. Just separates the the two areas of grey, the chest, the area that's got grey on the chest and arms and then the legs. And if you paint the accessories in black, that just separates that quite nicely. Then we do the last part is just the chin strap. Do 
as neat as you can. That's looking good. So that's that done. And that actually marks the end of base colours for that card. And already it actually looks pretty good. So, and then what we'll do is you're just going to use washes and highlights to enhance what's already there. Right, next stage, you're going to do two washes at once, uh, just on different areas of the miniature, so it's not going to affect the figure at all. Do the seraphim sepia first, and that is all the areas that are skin. So we just run some into the face, that picks out the details quite nicely. And then the hands, just run that in there, that picks out that detail nice, that's good. And then you take some and apply it to the base, and that's just to give a wash or a shade to the highlighting that you've already done. So I'm just running it around, making sure I get around the feet, that just sets him in his base nicely, and then just in patches. It's representing sort of dirt and rust and so on. Uh, so that looks good. So that's that wash done. And then the other wash is the Nuln Oil and that is for the rest of the figure. So it goes over the, the grenades, the black. When you put a wash over the black it helps the black, uh, it stops it from wearing away quite so easily. Washes, they do help to key it all in. So I run it around the feet and the boots as well. And then just on all of his tunic. See that shading in? Just nice on the arm. And then the las gun. Around the neck, chin, crest on top, and just around the helmet. Seals it in all nice, just around the neck there. Very straightforward technique this one. And this would be the same for any vehicle that you're painting. So it's sprayed grey, you've picked out the details and then it's just the black wash over the whole thing. Just run around. Pretty much every stage of painting this figure is fast. And yet I think the result was pretty Effective. People have said they like the look of the Imperial Guard that we use in our games. So that's looking, that's come up well. Just checking to make sure I've got all the areas covered. And that looks pretty good. Right, so that's that done. So that's your two washes there. I'll have to let that dry and then we'll be able to put the third. Uh, and final wash on to finish off stage two. Right, so next wash is the Agrax Earth shade, and the the grey areas are finished. Just looking to put this over all the metallic parts and the skin, and that just helps you create. Uh, it would look a bit plain if it was just the null oil, but when you add a little bit of brown, it gives it more of a seasoned kind of look and helps bring the tone down. So all the metallic parts on the gun along the top there and then the hands and you can see how that just strengthens the detail there just underneath and behind that looks good just there back part of the metallic part of the helmet there grenade and then the top crest on the helmet and then the face you just drop that ink in and it shades that nicely for you so that uh, figure looks really good now that's that second stage finish that's all the wash is done and uh, he looks really good as he is you could get away with that easily um, so if you're trying to put an army together quickly this technique is uh, super quick for getting those good results. So that's that done. So we're going to let that dry and then we'll go on to the third and final stage just to bring up some details and it is effective 
uh, it adds a lot more interest to the figure, but I will let that dry. Right, I'm going to show you how to paint skin now. Uh, so we've painted it with the Dwarf Flesh over and then the two washes, the sepia colour and then uh, the Agrax Earth shade. And that's shaded in between all of the fingers for you. It's all done, uh, all the eye sockets, all around the nose and the mouth. So that part's finished. You're halfway there. Uh, and then all I do is just go back over the Dwarf Flesh so just all the raised parts, so you've got the nose, cheeks, and then just under the nose and in the mouth. That'll do, not being too fussy, just picking out the main parts. Then just painting the fingers, and then the surface of the hand, and then the other hand, the fingers, one, two, in four, just running the brush along the ridge, just that detail is already there for you. So I'm just picking it out, painting the back of the hand again, and then just coming around with the barrel of the gun, and then just getting the thumb on the other side. So we can get, and then you want to take the bone, color with a little bit of the flesh, alter it down on the palette and then I just pick out the knuckles on the hands there I'm just going to pick out the tips of the fingers on this one like so and then the thumb just the extreme highlight here so I'm going to do the nose for sure top of the cheekbones and then you can try and pick out the tops of the eyebrows, you can't really see it on this guy with the helmet on. And that's about it, so that's that picked out. Some people paint the eyes, uh, I don't bother, I leave the eyes out. Uh, you can hardly see them anyway, and it can make the figure look like he's just sort of staring, it doesn't look right, so that's, that's that done. Now, there's one other bit here in its colour that I haven't mentioned, you can do it if you want, I'm just taking a bit of pink horror. Uh, paint or you can mix up your own just with a bit of red and a bit of white and you, you can touch in the bottom lip just with a touch of paint just like that and that picks out that lip and just that touch of pink that picks out the lip there if you do both lips the top and the bottom uh, that can make it the figure look like he's wearing lipstick it doesn't look right but just the bottom lip if you pick that out, uh, that just adds a bit of colour to the face and makes it more accurate as well. And uh, that's about it. So you can see that there. I think that uh, that's good enough detail there and the face looks pretty effective. And that's the same way I paint faces and all of the figures. Uh, I'll just give you a close-up view here. So there's a close-up view. And uh, I think that's pretty effective. It's pretty easy. Uh, the washes are doing the hard work for you for picking out all the detail. Uh, and then you're just picking out the extreme highlights just to lift that and uh, I think that gives a pretty good result and uh, that flesh has come out really well. D flesh is difficult uh, but uh, that technique is pretty effective and quite straightforward to follow. Right so on to the, one of the last stages now and that's the iron breaker and uh, you're really close to getting this figure done now so we've got the flesh finished and then really with this colour uh, you can just uh, go over the uh, metal that you've already done, just picking out the main details on the gun, like that. Just highlighting a bit of the metal on the grenades, not being too fussy. Just picking out some of the detail on the uh, crest there, and then the barrel of the gun. You don't have to do that, you can leave it if you want to. I just like to. Don't the weaponry really looking too. Uh, dirty, these guys uh, are seasoned but not the way I don't want the weapons looking rusty and then just picking out the details there but on the back of the head the dagger just on top there and then 
so he's looking good there. And then also, wherever there is uh, armor, so not the boots, not this box here at the back, although you can pick out the little studs, one, two, a couple of little studs on the water bottle as well. But just where there's armor, so this part here is armored, so I'm going to chip there a little bit, and then this part here is armored, just around the edges. Don't want to do all the edge, a couple of little spots. Gonna add in there whatever you feel like putting in. And then just the edging of his shoulder pads. That'll be armor as well. A couple of little spots on that as well. Gonna put a scrape on. And then just a few bits there. So that's that chipped up. And then we'll just do the other shoulder as well. There we are. Coming around. Less is better. Too much and it overcrowds it too much. So that's his shoulders done. Then also the helmet as well. Just there. And these sort of bits that cover where the ears would be. good and then a few scrapes on top of the helmet a few dots and scrapes however much you want to do and then the casing on the gun as well like and just on the other side as well now I've got silver fingernails here that's because I've been spraying uh, some orc killer cans. I've been spraying them silver just to save some time. I can just paint the base colours and then put washes straight onto that silver colour. So that's why my fingernails are a bit sort of silver looking at the moment if you're wondering. But that's just the chip in there. That looks good and you add as much or as little as you want. I think that looks alright. And uh, he's, he's come out pretty well. A little bit there, a little bit of chipping. Just to balance it out. Thanks. They've just been a bit fussy, but that's it. And that's where the metallic areas, uh, they're painted in the regimental colours and then they get chipped as he's out on campaign. So that's made that look, look, a, look a lot more realistic. That's the painting finished, really. Uh, we've just got the base to finish off and then we're going to apply a few transfers as well. Right, so basing's very straightforward. Uh, it's just the uh, PVA glue, take an old brush, blob some onto the base, as much or as little as you want, depending on what style you want for the basing. Just get rid of the spare PVA there. And then we just dip them in this tub of flock, get a tap, and then just run my finger around the edge, just rubbing off the spare flock and then that's the basing done. That grain just adds another colour into your figure which helps. I like to add some flock to the base even if it's like urban fighting which is what this colour scheme is. So that's that done. The flock I use is Verdant Green. It's by a company called TSS, Total System Scenic. They are on the web so you can look them up and you can get a packet for about 250 and it will last a long long time. So that's uh, uh, a nice flock that I use. It's not too long a grain, it's quite short. So it's a nice one to get a hold of. I've used that for pretty much all the figures I do. So we're on transfers here. We're going to do two just on the shoulder pads. So it's uh, 812 is the number here that's going to go on the right hand side. And then just that caddian symbol as well is going to go on the left. So there's the two transfers, a little bit of PVA glue and an older brush. So you take some water and some of the PVA and apply it on. So it's just a watery PVA that you're putting on. And then the number comes off. I've got it on the brush now and I just drop it onto the shoulder pad 
and using a bit of PVA glue I'm simply just flatten it out with the brush you're struggling to go on the curved surface a little bit so what I do is take the knife and just wherever there's a bend or a fold I just cut it with the hobby knife just by rolling it over the surface of the transfer and then just carefully flattening it down and that works really well that's that, that 812 is gone fine now I'm not going to dab it, I used to dab it with tissue but that ended up the transfer would come off because it was stuck to the glue so I just leave it when it's flat I just leave it as it is, be patient and let it dry so I applied the watery PVA there, just going to lose some of the extra water and then just stick this transfer on apply the transfer with the brush and then use the knife to adjust it into the correct position if you're gentle then that won't do any damage to the actual transfer itself and then wherever I can see a fold is one here I do one at the top do a second one on one side and then just take the PVA and then just gently apply it on top, thin it, spreading it out and that symbol's gone on fine as well, you can see it there so both those two will dry now the 812 is actually dry pretty quick and you can see it there that's gone on just nice the numbers help them look really regimented, it's well worth doing the transfers there as well, those regiment numbers especially when they're all the same number, it makes them look like they're in, there's droves of them which is the impression you want to create for Imperial Guard so that's the figure done, uh, it looks pretty good once it's dry, that has actually dried off enough there so I take the Seraphim Sepia, it's just an extra little touch and I just dirty the transfer area a little bit just a little bit of that brown and that just helps break that up and uh, helps add to that seasoned look to the figure that's finished now, he'll just get a coat of the uh, matte varnish and then he's done but you can paint these really quick uh, it's just grey, I haven't had to touch this grey here uh, just that one shade has worked really well now, one thing to look out for, uh, if you find that when you apply your sh dark shade onto the grey and it, it beads, it doesn't flow in properly, that may be because of the surface tension created by that spray going on. So what I have been doing uh, recently with my figures is after the base sprays are done, uh, after this base is done here and then this grey or whatever colour I'm doing, um, then I then give it a very light coat of matte varnish over the whole thing and that will help the paint flow in um, to the shading a lot better so keep an eye out for that, if that's a problem you encounter uh, then just do that trick and that works really well but there he is, he's all done happy with the way the skin's come out, the chip timer looks really good and the grey overalls looks perfect ready for fighting in the cities of the Warhammer 40,000 universe so that's the Imperial Guardsman uh, popular one, Imperial Guard are very popular to collect and uh, hopefully you can see how to, here just how easy they are to paint uh, using this basic technique. I mean you could, you don't have to do this way, uh, you could swap this colour for cream uh, and then the shoulder pads for the green, uh, same technique I would use for that uh, just to change your shade uh, to more of a, like a brownie colour if you're going to do cream uh, and it's the same chipping and finishing off that I've shown you here. So whatever colour scheme you want, but this grey works particularly well for City Fine. So there it is, Imperial Guard. Check out the channel for other painting tutorials. Uh, there is one for the Blood Angels, Imperial Fists, and Eldar, Tau, Necrons, Dark Elder, uh, Blood Angels. So there's uh, plenty to check out. Just follow along step by step and you can get these results and uh, check out the battle reports as well where you can see these armies fighting out across the battlefields as well so 
Thanks for watching and tune in next time.